my name is Adriana, and uh, I'm here to present this work, which is related to the perception of uh, upper secondary school teachers of school coexistence in Mexico. This, well, um, in case you couldn't tell by my sweatshirt, I'm from here, from the University of Salamanca. But this work was done in collaboration with my colleague Alicia, who is here, uh, from the uh, Autonomous University of Baja California in Mexico. Well, there was some concern in Mexico regarding the compliance with the right to education, whether the schools were <coughs> complying with uh, providing the students with the right to an education. Well, this right to education is not only uh, perceived as providing the students with a school to go, uh, but the government thought that the schools have to have some conditions related to the resources of the school and related to the pedagogical organization of the school. And in our case, uh, the part <coughs> that we assessed was the <coughs> coexistence within the school, whether there was a good level of coexistence. Uh, this study was fostered by, by the National Institute for the Assessment of Education of Mexico, the INE, uh, and for this they designed uh, the assessment of the basic conditions for teaching and learning for upper secondary education, which uh, is ETEA, e -C -A -A, uh, which is a medium term assessment, which, as I said, it aims to monitor the compliance of schools with the right to education. Uh, it assesses seven aspects, but we're going to focus on the coexistence because, well, my colleague Alicia is an expert on, on coexistence and that's why she was tasked to assess this topic in particular. Uh, there were five main topics related to the interpersonal relationship, the relationships based on respect and tolerance, the habit habitability and security within the school, the coexistence coexistence rules and disciplinary practices that respect student rights, the active participation of students, and the inclusive treatment towards students. <coughs> um, despite providing a definition of school coexistence that served as a framework for this assessment, Fierro and Tapia, uh, Fierro was also a part of this study, uh, they acknowledged that a coexistence is a, is a highly multifaceted term which is not easy to define. So, uh, well, the, the National Institute decided to go with a definition, and this study aims uh, to analyze the internal validity of, the con of this construct that they uh, built uh, to see if it has, uh, if the items that construct the five different uh, constructs within coexistence if they can be reported as such, or if they have inconsistencies. Uh, we had data from, well, we are going to focus just on the views of teachers. Also, the leadership teams and the students were assessed, but it was a large amount of data, so we decided to focus on the teachers. There were um, almost 12,000 uh, teachers from uh, all the Mexican states. Uh, we analyzed the data provided by the teachers, which was also regarding four dimensions. They did in, in form of the active participation of students for obvious reasons. And we performed a, a, a factor analysis to see uh, whether the data could be reported as it was or if it has to be restructured. Uh, these, are the, these are the conditions that we, that we assessed. Within the first dimension, we had a climate of respect between the teachers and the students, between the teacher and the management team, and among the teachers themselves. We also had some uh, information on the safety around the school and within the school, uh, the teacher knowledge of coexistence rules, and an inclusive treatment of all the members of the school. As you can see in the results of the factor analysis, uh, the first dimension, all the factors are as they should be, which is evidenced by this column. Uh, there should be one factor, and there was one factor. In the second dimension, we had some inconsistencies, but when we looked at the wording of the items, all the inconsistencies were logical, in a sense. For example, in the variable M67, which is uh, regarding the 
situations affecting the safety of the school, uh, there were like two different levels of severity <coughs> in the situations. For example, there were theft and bullying on the one side, and on the other side, there were sexual aggressions and recruitment to criminal groups, for example. So it was logical that there was two different factors. The same happened with the types of violence. We had psychological violence and verbal violence on one side, and uh, physical and sexual violence on the other side. Uh, in the, the knowledge of the teachers regarding the, the rules of coexistence, there was also a logical party because some rules referred to the students and some rules referred to the teachers. So it was also logical that there would be two factors. And in the case of the, of the fifth dimension, we had one straight item that didn't conform to the factor. And well, that, that one, we didn't find the logic for it. Okay. So, well, the basic conclusion is that we can uh, report the data as is. We have to recommend the National Institute to restructure this construct because it does not comply with what they thought uh, would be the, the structure of the instrument. <coughs>